Aerials in the sky. It takes four to have some good Wi Fi. Good afternoon, morning and welcome to Zerbert Sorters Tech. If you're new here, I'm Reese of the Four Piece Variety Orbuki Triple XL. In front of me is a really, really good bang for buck Wi-Fi 6 router. Well, in front of me is a box. Well, in front of me is a router, in front of you is a box. But if I do that, then there's a router. So let's go through the physical setup of the router and what TP-Link is doing over here. So it's, just, it's very standard, very everyday setup that we're used to. You've got four RJ45 LAN ports on the back, the WAN port in as well, which can also be used from another router, which I've just played around with a little bit this morning. Next to that is a power button, and next to that is the power connection, and that runs off 12 volts and one amp, which is fantastic, because they're dime a dozen, and this connector is also literally dime a dozen. I've seen it on everything from rechargeable screwdrivers to well routers. So it's going to be very easy to replace your adapter if you do need to, which I like a lot. Then on the far left, we have the WPS and Wi-Fi button, and then we have the little reset port, which you normally need to reach with a pen or some that effect. And you can often tell a lot about a person by what they choose to press their reset button with. Flanking all of that are the four aerials you see over here for your good old Mimo. And then around the front, we do have power indicator, 2.4 gigahertz and the 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi indicator, the internet light indicator, the LAN indicator, and then the firewall indicator next to that or security indicator of some description. I'm not too sure what that connects to or how it connects to, but it's there. Now, I do quite like this compared to my C80 for the fact that they've put the LAN ports all in the middle like that. It's much better than when they were amongst the other aerials and stuff that made it a little bit clumsy. But it is bigger, obviously, quite a lot longer. But they're, they're, once again, there are two mounting ports on the bottom over here. So if you want to mount it on your wall and just slide it off and on and off of Hilti nails, then you will be able to do that. The only criticism I have for this setup right now is that this mirror finish is kind of horrible if you want to keep it looking clean. I've scratched its face off with a microfiber cloth. It wasn't even just a random cloth. I have a microfiber cloth and a microfiber duster for the studio, literally. And just doing that was enough to scratch the top of it because I've got a couple of fingerprints on that mirror finish. It does look nice, but is it functional? It's not fantastic. But nobody buys a router to look at the thing. We all buy a router to give us internet and control over our network. So I'm going to now jump over to the PC to answer the Kellogg's question of what's in a box. All right, so when you first log in, you're going to be greeted by the screen in front of you over here. I've already done all of this, so I'm just going to basically click next. You can set your, com your connection type, then you can uh, change your MAC address. If you want to, you can clone another device's MAC address, which is kind of sick. It's actually got a quite a lot of features, this router. Smart Connect is not something that I actually like. I, I disable this so that they can be uh, set up set, or they do broadcast separately because it will then decide what's best for your device and stuff. And it can create some latency. I have had experience with this. Um, and then it does a connection test, even when it's been connected and I'm redoing this again. And then when it's done having a solid faff, then you'll see this screen over here where you can see your network details and all of that lovely stuff. By the way, length always beats complexity. This is better than your complex uppercase, lowercase, down case, etc. password, just so you're clear. Um, but then you get a cloud service link, which is kind of cool, but also somewhat invasive. So I say, no, we don't, we don't touch that. But let's get into the meat and potatoes. Let's go straight over here to advanced. Or actually, these were just the settings that we've already done. So yeah, straight into advanced over here. So status is nice because you can see everything that is set up and what your connection rate is and what kind of setup it is, etc. The internet tab is literally just for your settings for this you for this router. You can release it and renew as well. This might look interesting to you because it's basically going through my other router. 
So you can do that, which is quite nice to it. And then basically what will happen is it'll take the internet from the other router, but then isolate this network so that it's not connected to the other network, which is quite a nice thing. But then you can daisy chain them all together as well, because it's got a setting for that as well, which is kind of cool. Your LAN, which is a normal IP address for the router itself. And then your VLAN, which you can set up for different like ISP settings and that kind of stuff. It can, it can facilitate quite a lot, this router. The DHCP server is what gives other devices on the network IP addresses. So you can obviously edit this and you can look at your DHCP client list, which at the bottom over there, you can see it's hooky-pc. Oh, that's me. Dynamic DMS, this is really to connect to the network with a domain name more so than anything else it is a bit of an advanced feature that most of the time would only be used for home offices and that kind of stuff but the function is actually there which is quite nice and then the routing tab just shows the active routers and the gateways and all of that sort of stuff which is quite nice tp link id now this is connected for the phone this is if you want to do your phone monitoring and setup and connection then you will need to sign up with this but if we go into the wireless tab for instance you can see there's a considerable amount of settings over there and the best is guest network as well which i absolutely love to have um, and you can see you can give access to your local network or have it completely encapsulated in its own environment which is honestly the best the wireless schedule from what i can see is to turn it on and off which is cool but the parental control actually does a bit of job of that then the wps has actually got a couple of different ways to connect you can use the pin from the device inside of this actual monitor setup over here you can search for it by clicking start over here and then it'll activate the wps for two minutes for other wps devices to connect or you can just press that wps button that i showed you earlier on the back of the router and then it'll connect from there this all of it's got the, all of these functions i'm just showing you the page because i I have no idea what any of this is. Now, as far as port forwarding and stuff goes, it does have the facility to do it. You can change different service names and the device IP address and which protocols, etc., per IP, which is quite nice to do. Triggering as well. I don't know anything about this, to be honest. UPnP, it's a thing that does stuff. Um, so this is like dynamic open ports for devices and games and that sort of stuff. And then a DMZ, which is a, 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 an environment that can keep those. It's kind of like a, um, the, well, it's demilitarized zone, right? Or it's a deconnected zone that can basically encapsulate itself in the, inside of the network as it exists. But Let's get to something a bit simpler and more appealing for home users. The first thing being these parental controls. Now, if I go add over here, you can set the profile name. So let's just call this one test, for instance, and then we can add devices right from the device list. So whatever's connected to the Wi-Fi, if it was my phone or something like that, then I could then select that device and then go add, right? A nice thing now, okay, uh, profile name is there. If I go next, sorry then you'll see you can create rules and different custom settings, right? So if, for instance, I wanted to ban, say, access to Facebook, for instance, I would literally just do that and then it's added there. And then you could do that for every single website or keyword. You can put in whole web page sites as well like this. If I did it like that, for instance, right? And then blacklist those sites, right? And then there's time controls as well, which is pretty cool. So you could say Monday to Friday, let's say the kids only get two hours worth of internet time. And then on Saturday and Sunday, they have no limits, right? So they can use it in the school time days, they get two hours worth of internet to do whatever they need to do. And then after the fact, they can just have that, right? Okay, so you gotta you gotta do each block individually, right? But then you could say for like these blocks over here and like these blocks over there. Or you can drag and select, which is kind of nice, right? So let's say save, and then those will be the times that they have, right? Um, then the, uh, this is the daily limit for how long they will be on the line. So let's just say save, and then you can see time online limit and all of that sort of stuff and it's easy to edit from there or just straight block the connection uh but let's delete it for now because i want to have access to my things right and then you can just have a time setting set up right well this is actually the time system time itself which is kind of weird that it's actually no it's not because it needs to be there 100 but you can see how that works and it's pretty cool it's a nice function to have especially for parents and then the quality of service this is this is where things matter quite a lot i think for a lot of us gamers and stuff 
If we are, for instance, sharing a 50 meg with our parents and they're busy Netflixing out their earlobes, you could just set this to 25. So they get half the line rate, right? And it's so seamless. As I click save, it's already done. And I've already set up a test here where I was doing the 10 meg, 10 meg, and this is the scores that it came out with. But let's go again with this. And I'm pretty sure it's going to go into like the mid 20s here again. So it'll be slightly under the, the quoted over there, but you can see it actually works pretty damn well. And now if I go and unlimit this sucker and just take this off entirely, right? Then you should see the upload go absolutely moggy back to my full line speed of 200 megabits per second. Not that I ever get it because Access's first hop goes to Afri Worst. Literally the worst ISP in South Africa. Boycott them at every point and turn you can, trust me. But back to the router, quality of service handling works absolutely no problem. So it's got its nice security setup as well, where it's got a built-in firewall and stuff, and you can limit pings and access control as well to it, which devices and stuff will have access to which specific devices, IP and Mac binding, which is always nice, and then uh, application layer gateway, which is going to be very for very advanced sort of stuff. It's got a VPN server as well, with open VPN that you can set up as in the router which is kind of cool to have and then more more settings for those vpn connections and on the rest of it ipv6 i have no idea how this works or anything like that so i'm just going to show you the functions and features that are on this page then we have the smart life assistance area which is really tp link routing for alexa which is kind of cool. So Alexa can control your router and can optimize your traffic as you need to. I wish we had, a, I had an Alexa to test, but I don't really feel like inviting, you know, Skynet into my house. Lastly, we have the one mesh system where the TP link devices can work together to hand over between the range extenders and all of the various routers and stuff you have. So this can be set up in access point mode and then just repeat the other routers network effectively. And then lastly, we have the system setups. One of them that's really nice is the firmware updater. It did it automatically as I had it connected. As soon as it knew that it was on the internet, it checked for an update and did the update first thing, which was quite nice. You can back up your settings and restore settings. So you, if you do do complex VPN setups and stuff, you can literally copy paste them between different routers and then just change those addresses, which is quite nice to have. Administration as well, you've got a couple of uh, features over here, but one of the better ones, I think is the system log where it shows literally everything that you've done and on what time etc which is kind of nice right and you can even see when it was set up like at the factory and what they were doing like it's kind of interesting and you can see everything that i was busy with over here today which is also quite nice 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 features diagnostic setup is also quite nice because for instance google's on an 8.8.8.8 that's their dns right and you can just ping directly from the device which is going to eliminate any issues with any other network environment stuff like if your pc or your phone is faulty and you run a ping it eliminates the problem of or, or that being a fault and it's actually quite a bit more in depth than what you see in your normal cmd Time and language, we've kind of already visited this. You can get it from the internet. You can set 24 hour time and you can set different servers and that sort of stuff as well, which I quite like. Reboot is exactly what it is. And you can schedule a reboot every day, which is quite nice to have if you are having network issues constantly. Like if you're on AfriHost network, this will be your future. And then your LED status, control lights, etc. If you want to have them on and off, you can turn them off, which is quite nice. So if it is in your room, then you don't get LED flicker while you're trying to sleep. And then lastly, like I said, the operation mode. So it can be set up in an access point mode so that you can then repeat that network. Anyway, that is everything that sits inside of the TP-Link. Back to the studio. So as you can see, TP-Link has improved that interface. I mean, it's literally day and night from what it used to look like on those run-of-the-mill 750N sort of setups where they had BGNN up to like 600 or 450. Like, those were horrible. They looked like they were made in a gimped Windows XP that had a bit of Linux kernel thrown up on it. This is so much better. And the fact that you can now connect it to your mobile device and manage it from there and all of the parental controls and quality of service handling, much, much better. Anywho, that is all I have for you in this review. If you have enjoyed it, please do hit us up with a like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the flip side. Ariel, in the sky.
sky. If you have four, then you get good Wi-Fi. Aerials in the sky. It takes four to have some good Wi-Fi. Much better.